So today we're in Tan, which is along the Sahe, the West Sea. And along that coast, you find the mud flats, which is home to some of the most gorgeous seafood here in Korea. We're going to dig up clams today. There's teha, which are these giant shrimp they can find here in Korea. And the season is about to start, so they're extra tasty this time of year. So we're going to have some delicious food today and have a ton of fun. So let's go. Here we go. One beautiful clam. We'll eat like kings tonight. Oh, wow. Look at this guy. They just told me that you, you don't find one of these more than once or twice a month. Now that's cool. And I'm going to eat it. All right, so what do you do when you find something delicious in nature? You cook it up and eat it, of course. Right now, we've got this fire going. It's perfect. It's going to strap on my glove because, you know, safety first. And here we go. All right, so we've got a ton of different shellfish. You might recognize this guy as one we just caught ourselves. And then this is what's known as the kijoge here in Korea. And it's called a pen shell in English. And this one you have to go into slightly deeper waters to find, but you can still find these in the Sahel, the West Sea. So onto the fire it goes. You see all these delicious juices? Oh, here we go and you start to see a boil on the inside. And once they're open, they're ready to eat. The beauty of chogegui, about grilling the shellfish over an open fire like this, is in its sheer simplicity. This is pretty much it. No other condiments, no sauces, no seasoning goes in there. All the flavor is in that shellfish already. And all we're doing is bringing out the best of it. You don't even really need the chodang, you could just, when they've just been cooking in their own juices like that, nothing else. With big guys like this, you gotta slice them up because, let's face it, it's a little bit too much. What is it, try to get that all in one bite? And then, you eat it over rice. And all this gets topped with a dollop of chojang, which is gochujang, the Korean red pepper paste with vinegar. And so it's got this spicy, heart, sweet complexity to it that really lends itself really well to seafood. Mm. So these are teha. They're plump, they're luscious, they're beautiful, and they're gonna get grilled almost just as simply as those clams were. We're gonna do them right over some salt. You hear that popping? It's because there's a little bit of moisture trapped inside those salt pistols. All right. Yep, these are ready. Ooh, they're hot too. Ooh, yeah. All right, first thing you gotta do, gotta eat the head. This is the best part. This is where all the flavor of the shrimp is. Mmm. Mmm. So what I'm doing right now is, I'm actually making salt. Uh, if you remember that salt they used to grill the tea, there's that exact same salt. And salt can come from a variety of sources. It can be mined, it can even come from natural gas. But this one, it comes from the ocean and is gathered all naturally, just like this. This is actually really relaxing. It's like a combination of being in the ocean and also being in the garden. I don't really want to leave. So we're at Yongyu Shikwan, and we're about to have a specialty of this region. It's known as urok jokku, and it's something they can only get in this region, and I've never had it before. I've never even heard of it before, but it smells delicious. Yeah. Korea has a long history of dried or semi-dried fish or salted fish. We do a lot of different things with seafood in order to either preserve it or change its texture or its flavor, so I love urok on its own, so let's see how it turns out after it's been salted and boiled again. One other thing that's really cool about this dish is that the broth used for it, the stock, is actually the water that's left over after you wash rice. So I've never had anything like it before. Ah. There's a word in Korean, it's 담백하다. And there's no real translation for it. it. 
means rich, but it's not really rich. It means like savory and meaty, but it's it's more than that. It's all of those, yet it's none of them at the same time. It, it it's hard to explain because there's no real English word for it. But trust me, it's delicious. Ah, I think so. The West Sea, it's really underrated. It's close to Seoul for one, and it's got a lot of delicious seafood. And those two reasons alone are definitely reasons for me to come back. I'm going to come back just to have this dish again. There's something about it that makes you feel like a kid again. And all the more so because we're here today in Yangpyeong in Gyeonggi province at the Sumi Village Catfish Festival. And it's a fantastic event for families. You can see there are a ton of kids here and they're all having a great time for good reason because it's beautiful out, you know, there's the water, there's the catfish. So come with me today, we're gonna have some fun and some great food. So they tell me that I need to rock one of these mustaches in order to catch one of the catfish to uh, fool them into it, that I'm, you know, thinking that I'm one of them. I've been fishing before, I've never had to do this, so I'm a little dubious, but they say so. My fish. I have to beat him up now. All right. So this is it. This is the Maggie. This is the catfish right here. And of course, this isn't how you catch them out in the wild. But you know what? I kind of like what they have set up here for the kids. It's a lot of fun. And you know what? I've never caught a fish with my bare hands before. All right, so the thing about catfish is that it's a freshwater fish and it lives low down in the mud and in the weeds, so it can take on a kind of murky, muddy flavor. So there are two ways around this. You can either sort of camouflage the flavor, you know, put lots of seasonings and spices in it, or you can go the other way around and cook it in a way that enhances it and makes it something really delicious. And that's what we're gonna do today. So all we're gonna do is just take these catfish right here, a little bit of salt on one side, And that's it. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take these guys and we're gonna cook it over some hardwood smoke. So salt and smoke, that's all it needs to bring out the best of the catfish. The great thing about freshwater fish is that when you cook it over an open fire like this, you know, that murkiness, it doesn't go away, but rather it's complemented by the smoke. And, it, you know, the salt really brings out the best in the fish. It's delicious. You really have to try it one time. Tractor before. Definitely a first. Alright. So here we have Oju, and it's a really funny dish because chuk refers to porridge. And you know, chuk in Korea is normally made of things like rice, grains, beans, vegetables. So to have one made out of fish is really unique. And you know, all refers to fish. And it's not as thick as you can see as you know as other chuk as other porridges are, but it kind of has the same sort of like you know rib sticking restorative effect. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's made here with the uh, with, with the um, with the catfish that we got from the lake. 
and it's spicy, it's got a lot of body to it. You know, when I first had this, I was really confused because, you know, it doesn't look like a porridge. But the more I think about it, you know, it makes sense. It falls in the same family because, you know, it has the same effect as other juice. So welcome to Sochuku, and honestly, this is one of my favorite areas in the city. And it's because you can do so much here in a single day. Culturally, it almost can't be beat. So come join me as we spend the day here in Sochuku. So we're at the Yangzhou Flower Market today, and I gotta say, first off, I wish you can smell what I'm smelling because it's awesome. It's fresh, it's floral, and what's more is that there's this great buzz here. People are milling about, it's packed. So even if you're not a big flower fan, it's worth checking out because it's an awesome scene. And you know what? You can pick up something for yourself like this. I like that. So we're here at Marina, and the first thing that strikes you when you walk through these doors is that it's French through and through. And that's what they do well. They do those classics perfectly. They specialize in brunch, but today I'm here for their equally amazing desserts. I'm excited. So we're at the Seoul Art Center, and this place is enormous. I mean, they've got an opera hall, a music hall, a handful of museums, so at any given time of the year, there's something special going on. So you know what? It's a great place to spend the day. So we're at the National Geographic exhibit, The Beautiful Days, here at the Seoul Art Center. And I have to say, I'm really blown away. I mean, each of these photos themselves, they're all incredible, but when taken all together, it takes you away. It's transportive. So today we're at Amsa Himmertang, and Himmertang is this incredible Korean dish. It's a seafood soup, and it's clean, and it's spicy, and you know what? A clean dish in a clean interior like this sounds perfect for a hot summer day. really good. It's spicy, it's clean, it, it tastes like the sea, and that's when you know that the seafood is good, is when it just has that grindiness of the ocean. Cheers. Cheers. So today I'm out at Chebudo. It's in Gyeonggi-do, all the way on the west coast. This place, it's about two hours from the center of Seoul, and it's known for its mud flats. And if you look at this expanse, you can't see the edge of it. It's pretty amazing. And with mud flats come delicious things to eat. But by far, my favorite part of this place is as you come in, there's this narrow winding road that goes right through the mud flats. And on either side, you can see it for miles. It's absolutely incredible. It makes me more excited for the day to come. So right next to the mudflats, 
all along the road are hitchi, these seafood restaurants, and they all get their seafood straight from the mud flats. They go out there and dig, they get out on boats and uh, catch things, and that's exactly what I'm gonna go do. Oh, we got a huge one here. Glad we had to bring out the stumpfish. This guy's heavy. So we gotta get this guy back in some water so we can have it live when we get back to shore because when you eat hay, you need to have it live and fresh. This guy looks beautiful. Here we go. So to dig for clams, you just gotta take a little trowel and just dig just a few centimeters below the surface. See, right here. All right, so the owner of Obuiji, Fisherman's House, he's taught me how to catch the fish. Now he's gonna teach me how to break it down into pay. It's not, it's not as easy as it looks, although I can't say I'm making it look particularly easy. But the more you do it, you can start to get a feel for it. So, pemuchin, it's hair that gets tossed with a bunch of crisp vegetables and these delicious aromatics. And it all gets topped off with chokochujang, which is a vinegary gochujang, which is that famous Korean red pepper paste. It also gets some sesame seeds and sesame oil and some other secret ingredients that have been sworn to secrecy by. See, meontang is the soup that they normally serve at the end of a meal because they use all the bones and the parts left over to make a really flavorful seafood stock. Mm. Ah, the spicy kick with the heat as well, it kind of brings you back to life. So now that he's taught me how to cut some hay from that kwanga we caught, I'm going to make for him some ceviche with those clams we dug up. First off, with ceviche, you can't make it without citrus. Here we got lemon and lime. This is, these are garlic scales. it off with a little bit of salt, just a touch of olive oil. And for our final little touch, we have kangni, which is popcorn. In Peru, the traditional garnish for ceviche is a type of corn. So what we have here is kangni. And there you have it. That's my clam ceviche with a Korean twist. And I've invited the owner over here to taste them with me, so um <laughs> Today I'm taking you to Xiyun City, and this place is fantastic, not only because it's close, you can actually take a subway here, but because it's got a fantastic coast and some delicious food. So this is Pango Pond, and it's actually been around since the Joseon Dynasty. And if you think it looks good right now, wait until summer. This entire place goes in full bloom. It should be incredible. I'm at the Changzhou Natural History Museum, and it's actually quite an interesting place. Some of the exhibitions are really well put together, very well done. And Changzhou, uh, it means creationism in Korean. And while that might be a controversial topic, you know what, it's never a bad idea to get another perspective on things. So 
So I'm at Chagansu, which means small forests. And as you can see, it's quite accurate. It's a coffee shop, but it's inside a greenhouse. They sell flowers and plants here, and do you know what? I'm quite surprised you don't see more of these because it's actually quite delightful. So I've just gone to Oi Island, and I've determined that if you like anything about the sea, then this place is for you. Right in front of me, the water. Over there, hundreds of seafood restaurants, and down there, there's a fantastic seafood market. And behind me, well, that's the first lighthouse I've seen since I was a kid. I'm here at Tong Kun Tongone, which literally translates to generous tongos, and I can see, they definitely are generous. They specialize in jogegui, which are shellfish that are grilled in their own shells. So their juices and their liquids, they braise them and they condense and they just go, mmm, so delicious. So I'm gonna dig in. Shin, today is actually my first time in the city, and I gotta say, I've had a blast. It's beautiful, the food here is delicious, and I'll definitely be coming back. So today we're in Kangwa Island. It's only a stone's throw away west of Seoul, and it's one of my favorite places. I used to come here all the time as a kid with my family. It's got history and culture, but more than that, it's got this winter sea, you know, the ocean in the winter, it's got this quiet beauty to it, and also provides the freshest seafood. So come with me as we explore Kangwa Island and see why it's one of my favorite winter destinations. All right, so we're at the Pangsan Fish Market, and it's shaped like a boat, so that's kind of cool. But what's more important, not what it looks like, but where it is, and that's right along the water. Just right over there, you can see the fishing boats come in with their daily hauls. And, you know, for example, right now it's sumo season, which is gray mullet. And so if you go with what's close, and what's local, and what's in season, go for what's the freshest of the fresh, can't go wrong. All right, so we've come to Cheonsori Petchip. Now, Petchip is a place that specializes in pe, which is Korean-style raw fish. And now that's the one thing I love about the winter, is the seafood. It's excellent this time of the year, and Kangwa Island is known for it. And we can't leave without trying the local specialty, right? All right, I just want you to take a second and look at everything that's on this table. It's an embarrassment of riches. I've never seen this much beautiful seafood at one table before, and the majority of it comes from the waters right behind me. My mind is blown. So we're at Chandung Temple, and it's incredibly important culturally. It's actually considered a cultural cornerstone of Kangwa Island. And not only that, it's actually one of Korea's oldest temples as well. It actually dates back to the Kogudo period. And you can tell there's a certain depth to it. There's character, and you can really feel it, you can sense it when you're here. We're at the Kanghua Tidal Flats Center, and see, the tidal flats exist between the land and the sea. It's that area that's exposed once the tide goes up. So ecologically speaking, they're incredibly important because they're so diverse. And they're homes to lots of delicious things, like clams and crab. I'm standing on top of the Bunodi Hilltop Outpost, and it's a fortress. And this is all the things that's great about this area. It's this view and that water where the beautiful seafood comes from. There's a reason why it's one of my favorite places.